In this lecture, we're going to talk about how to go from questions to problems. So this is going to build on that last lecture where I talked about um, refining your research topic. This will help you to, again, figure out what exactly it is that you're interested in studying. So what is the basic structure of a problem? Well, we have a situation or condition that leads to undesirable consequences or costs. So I miss the bus leads to me being late to work and losing my job. The ozone layer is thinning, meaning people will die from skin cancer. So we've got a situation and the cost of it. Basic set of any problem. To review of what we've talked about before, um, a practical problem versus a conceptual problem. In practical problems, that cost is a tangible situation or thing that causes difficulty, something that actually really happens. In conceptual problems, the cost is not necessarily a tangible situation or thing, but some ignorance, some lack of understanding that keeps us from larger issues or problems. Um, so the, the situation, the problem, the cost is less tangible, although there might be very tangible problems down the road. The important thing to remember when you're working on your research project is that just because you see a problem doesn't mean that your readers see the problem. So you need to make sure that your readers know that your problem and that your issue is relevant. And again, that's why answering that so what question is so important. If you can't answer the so what question, the readers aren't going to find it relevant. So you want to keep answering prospective so what questions until the readers say, well, what will we do about it? So you might say the ozone layer is thinning. So what? Well, so a thinning ozone layer exposes us to more UV light. So what? Why is that relevant? Why should I care? So too much UV light can cause cancer. Well, someone might ask, so what? Why do I care if UV light causes cancer? Well, cancer will kill you. Oh, okay. Now I know that it's relevant. What do I do about it? Someone might not keep asking so what all those times, but they might. So you want to be able to, to answer uh, as much as you can. There might be someone who, when you get to the point, they say, well, if you get cancer, you'll die. They might say, so what? I don't care if I die. Well, then that's not your ideal reader. That's not really someone who's going to be interested in your project. You can't do anything about people if they ultimately don't care about anything, but you want to try as much as possible to show the relevance of your project. Now recall we made that three-part statement of the topic, what you're studying, because you want to find out what, in order to do what. Um, and again, there are questions embedded in that topic in parts two and three. So going back to the example we used um, in the previous lecture, I'm studying the effects, the effects of fracking on, water, on the water supply because I want to find out whether fracking is environmentally harmful in order to help my reader understand whether or not they should support fracking. So there are two embedded questions in there. Question part two is, is fracking environmentally harmful? That's one question that we're asking. And that is in order to solve the larger question of, should people support fracking? So there's those questions in our topic, and those will lead us to the problems that we're investigating. So when we went through and revised that topic, and we put it in that three-part statement, that first question helps us answer the second. Without knowing the answer to question one, we can't know the answer to question two. If we don't know whether or not fracking is environmentally harmful, then we can't answer the more important and here practical question of should we support or allow fracking. We need to know if it's environmentally harmful or not before we can decide on whether or not to support it. So we're asked one question in order to find out the answer to the second more important question. Again, readers can be skeptical and they may fail to see the relevance of a topic, so you want to be able to try to answer those so what questions. And someone could keep asking those questions. We don't know if we should support fracking or not. So what? Why is that an important issue? Who cares? Well, if we don't decide if we should support fracking or not, then big corporations will decide for us. So what? Who cares if big corporations decide for us? 
Well, if big corporations decide for us, they may, ask, they may act based on profit and not in our best interests. So what? Why do I care about that? Right. So again, you could keep as someone could keep asking, so what? You can keep providing answers to that. At some point, you just say, well, if you don't care, you don't care. Uh, but you do want to at least be aware that readers are going to be skeptical. They want to know why they should care. They want to know the so what. So the more you can answer that, the better. Now let's look at the various types of research problems, questions, and claims that, that you might come across. And if you recall from an earlier lecture, we had some basic types of research projects, those that address fact or existence of something, those that address definition and classification, those that address cause and consequence, those that address evaluation or appraisal, and those that address action or policy. And these are some examples of basic claims for each one of those. So let's look at each of these individually and see what are the types of problems, questions, and claims that are going to be um, that are going to be pertinent for each one. And again, this will help you to figure out what is the research that you're doing, what type of problem are you researching, what type of question are you asking, and so what type of claim are you going to make based on your overall topic and and general you know basic questions and and purpose. So action and policy. Uh, this is where we have a problem where an undesirable situation X exists. There's some undesirable situation or phenomenon. And the question is, what should be done about X or what shouldn't be done about X? The claim that you make is we should do something or we should not do something because blank. So this undesirable situation exists. In order to solve it, we should do the following actions because the following actions will have these results to solve the problem. That's the basic structure of an action and policy research project. The basic structure of definition and classification research projects. Well, the problem is there's some object or phenomenon or situation, again, that exists. And the question is, what is this? That's a very simple way of putting it, but what is this thing? What are the things that make it up? How does it work? What exactly is going on? How do we understand this thing? And so the way you would make that claim is you would say that this object, the situation is best defined as blank because blank. So for example, birds are best defined as descendants of dinosaurs because of their DNA and the, and the genes that they inherit or whatever it might be. So it's about how do we understand something? What do we define something as and why? Why is that definition appropriate? Cause and consequence research projects. The problem that we're facing is a certain phenomenon X has occurred uh, or will occur. Or again, something exists. Some situation exists now. Um, what causes X? What has caused this X? To happen? What will be the results of X um, if it occurs? And so the claim that you make is, well, this is caused by blank, and we know that because, or this will cause blank, um, and we know that because such and such. So we're looking for, again, what are the best ways to explain why something has happened? Why are those reasons a good explanation? Or what can we predict will happen as a result of something? What will a certain phenomenon or situation cause? And how do we know that those will be the causes that result from it? So that's a cause and consequence research project. Evaluation and appraisal research problems. So the problem, we've got a phenomenon or an object that exists. Something exists. It's there. We want to know what's its value, why is it important, why is it significant, what has its influence been. And so the claim that we make is this X has such and such value because of blank. This is important because it's done this. This has been influential because of this or in these ways. We should value this thing because it has these properties, right? So you're saying this is what it's similar to the definition um, and uh, definition and, and categorization or classification research problem, but it's more about the value or importance of the particular object or phenomenon. You're evaluating why it's important, why it's valuable. 
finally, we have research problems or research projects that deal with facts or existence or an, an interpretation. Um, this is a little bit more complex, perhaps, to talk about. The problem here is that we've got various data and phenomenon, and they exist. And the question is, what's the meaning of all these things? How do we, what's going on? What do we do when we see these 10 different things? What does that mean to us? Well, the claim that we that we make in such research projects is that all this information that we've found or all this data suggests that blank is true or false because of blank. Or this information means that such and such because such and such. So looking at all these, this data, we can suggest that the claims of uh, interstellar contact from aliens is false because this data does not represent meaningful radio conversations or communications from outer space. Or looking at all this data, we can um, claim, we can make the conclusion that global warming will cause such and such degrees of um, temperature to raise over the next 50 years because blank, because that's what the data adds up to. So this is more about taking a lot of information that's there that we don't know what it all means and putting it together and saying, this is what it means. So to review, you want to ask yourself, what's the problem you're trying to solve or investigate? So look at those embedded questions in your topic. I want to find out if this is true in order to know this. So what are those questions? What is it that you're really trying to find out? What are the consequences of not solving that problem? What's the cost? What will happen if you don't answer that question? What's the so what of your research problem? Figure out is your problem practical or conceptual? Is it about some real tangible situation that occurs that's problematic? Or is it about something we don't know, that we don't understand? And you can ask yourself here, is there a conceptual aspect to your practical question? That is, is there some information or knowledge that we need to understand better in order to solve this problem? And you could also ask yourself, is there a practical application for your conceptual answer? That is, understanding this situation better or this phenomenon better, does that lead us to specific actions that we could take? And then think about what type of problem, question, and claim you're making. Is this about definition? Is it about evaluation? Is it about classification? Um, what, if, what, it, what is it? And that will help you figure out how to phrase your problem and what you need to look for and how you need to try to answer that question. And finally, whenever you're in doubt, ask yourself, so what? What are the costs? What are the consequences of this? If you can't answer that question, then you're going perhaps on the wrong track. So you always want to ask yourself, so what? What's the cost? What's the benefit of figuring this out?